Hello, my name is Linda Koh. I am originally from Southern California and I'm currently a PhD candidate in the College of Nursing at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I have been a registered nurse for 18 years and I'm certified as a public health nurse and I'm also certified in plant-based nutrition. My research interests include health promotion, disease prevention, and process improvement. Hello, my name is Paulo Barbosa. I am originally from Brazil. I am a program mentor at Western Governors University in the College of IT in the Master Program of Cybersecurity and Information Insurance. My research interests are risk management, privacy in healthcare, workforce development, and online ed education. We would like to thank you for taking time to listen to our presentation on privacy, nursing, and digital health. We know that with the adoption of new technology come great reward, but also great risks. Nurses can help to shape the implementation of new technologies by utilizing a proactive strategy to ensure privacy and facilitate the adoption of new technology into healthcare. Although nurses are not usually big data developers or lawmakers, nurses are trustworthy patient advocates that should be knowledgeable to be able to use artificial intelligence effectively. When nurses understand and implement technology properly, they as well as their patients and clients will benefit. By helping to ensure privacy and safety in the dissemination of healthcare information, nurses can ensure individualized, tailored care, that is culturally sensitive and inclusive. Empowering nurses with digital health will enable them to provide patient education that supports shared decision-making for patient-centered care with outcomes that promote quality of life and assist in achieving health equity. The overall aim for this current integrative review was to improve our understanding of the fourth industrial revolution and its impact upon privacy, nursing, digital health, as well as their pivotal role in advocating for patient and patient care. The purpose of this review was to analyze and synthesize the literature to better understand and evaluate these opportunities. For this methodological review, we used an integrative approach by Drs. Whitmore and Knopfel and searched six databases. To be included, articles had to be peer-reviewed primary sources and published in English from 2010 to 2020. The initial search strategy yielded 3,465 articles, of which 578 were duplicates and were therefore excluded. 95 full articles were assessed for eligibility. In total, 11 articles were retrieved and analyzed for this review. These articles include quantitative, qualitative, mixed methods, and theoretical works that took place in the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, United Arab Emirates, Netherlands, Taiwan, and Greece. Findings of the studies described and detailed healthcare providers, including nurses, patients and clients, and members of the interdisciplinary team's response to and interactions with electronic health records. While your article is outlining the importance of privacy and confidentiality, including guidelines from NHS, Code of Conduct, HIPAA, and Joint Commission, it was noted that there is a great need for information on how to ensure privacy and confidentiality of electronic health records. Privacy is more than just avoiding sharing of patient information in the elevator or lift, or sharing of passwords. Some of the pros mentioned in the articles include the electronic health record, or EHR, being perceived as more accurate, complete, and permanent than paper charts because patients didn't have to recall information as it was already documented electronically. It was stated that patients believed that EHRs facilitated communication between patients and providers, including providers outside of the individual healthcare system, and although not widely adopted, also seemed to enable patient self-management. Some cons listed in the articles include the following. It may be challenging to maintain privacy and confidentiality of EHRs, but study participants felt that the benefit outweighed the risk. There was also some concern for hacking, but individuals felt that security measures and monitors are already in place. There was also some mention that data is only as accurate and reliable as the data entry. And the most significant fear was uh, that of the potential loss of health insurance due to data breach or revealing pre-existing conditions. 
finding through that, in establishing a framework that effectively demonstrated the steps that could be taken to manage digital technology adoption. While nurses are often viewed as end users in technology, it is imperative that they be included in and in the advocate at all stages, including development. While nursing informatics has been implemented to help facilitate this, there is still a great divide in the communication between information technology development and healthcare, which may then directly impact patient outcomes. Other points to consider include that data mining and data collusion from various points that have allowed the different segments of industry to create profiles that may include these items related to privacy such as HIV status, gender, medication reminders, fitness, blood pressure, hours of sleep, electrocardiograms, social security numbers, and other details that may not need to be shared. It becomes clear that a strong association exists between perceived benefits, barriers, self-efficacy, and the need for advocacy with the intent to preserve privacy. During the preparation of this integrated review, the COVID-19 pandemic started which brought about additional privacy concerns. As of October 2nd, 2020 at 1900 GMT, according to Reuters worldwide, there were 34.3 million active cases and tragically over 1 million deaths. John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center reported in the US that there were more than 7 million cases with 208,304 deaths. And in the UK, there were 469,762 cases with 42,358 deaths. With the need to social distance or shelter in place, telemedicine has become a more common occurrence. This has led to remote access of data by healthcare providers at home on personal devices video conferencing through a third party, development of apps for contact tracing, tracking, and monitoring of active COVID-19 cases. These apps may include alerts sent to mobile devices that may contain information regarding active cases, ranging in detail from a person's age to gender and a detailed log of their movements by the minute, tracked using closed circuit television, credit card transactions with names of businesses visited, rooms and buildings visited, even which toilet was used and whether a mask was worn or not. Movements have been tracked using data from mobile phone carriers, immigration, public transportation, government, health insurance agencies, and hospitals. In addition, due to COVID-19, there is potential for developing long-term health conditions, which could potentially be labeled as pre-existing conditions. Digital health initiatives may also amplify socioeconomic inequalities and contribute to healthcare disparities. Some researchers reported that to balance the need for contact tracing and privacy, European authorities have proposed that data be retained only for 14 days, the period of a possible viral transmission, and that non-essential digital measures be lifted once the pandemic ends. In addition, some European countries are deploying a opt-in smartphone tracking application with anonymized data, no central database, and no GPS information. However, all this data is still traceable using digital forensics. Digital health safeguards and controls should include physical, technical, and administrative controls, ranging from risk analysis and management to contingency and disaster recovery plan, business continuity plan, workstation security, and access control on a need-to-know basis. Although patients often highly trust healthcare providers, especially nurses, there are items such as social security numbers and health insurance details that may create a bias and or delay access to healthcare if a patient is profiled. By implementing a digital health framework, nurses will be able to define a posture for digital technology adoption, identify and prioritize the opportunities in the clinical setting, identify risks, advocate on behalf of the patient, healthcare providers, and healthcare institutions. As we celebrate 2020 as the year of the nurse and 200 years since Florence Nightingale, while you also recognize October as the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month in the U.S., let us remember, as evidenced by this review, research 
has long focused on introduction and implementation of electronic health records and digital health technology with discussion of security and privacy. But there needs to be more than just discussion. There needs to be a focus on preventing, identifying, and reducing risks related to privacy with continued education and evaluation. It is not enough for nurses to just get the job done. They need to go a step further and continue to advocate. Thank you for your time and attention. By scanning the QR code on this screen, you will be able to access our references.